For those of you who do not know me, I've been a union man since that day in 1973, when at 4.30 in the morning, the ranch supervisors and crew bosses assembled the entire Contreras family in front of our little home in Dinuba, California. With the headlights of their trucks glaring in our eyes, they fired us because, as the supervisor told my father, Julio, you're the best worker we ever had, but we can't have any more Chavistas working here. Well, growing up, you know, at an early age, we became involved with the United Farm Workers Union led by Cesar Chavez. Cesar would always educate us about self-worth, that we weren't agricultural implements. We're not the same as a tractor. We're not the same as a plow. We're human beings and we have rights, and we have a right to stand up and be heard. And today in Los Angeles, we are standing shoulder to shoulder with immigrant rights groups, community-based organizations, civil rights groups to say, we are one movement, we are united, and we will not stop marching until dignity and respect is given to all. Well, when I took over as the Secretary of Treasurer here in 1996, we had a, uh, a lot of issues to address. We clearly understood that if we were gonna grow and organize more workers, it was gonna be through the immigrant Latino workforce in Los Angeles. And we knew that we had to readjust the labor movement to align ourselves so that we would be advocates for issues that are important to the Latino community, to be advocates for immigration reform, for legalization, for rights on the job. We have this vast army of activists, many of them who are immigrant workers, many of them who are undocumented here, you know, or don't have the right to vote here, but they can still help us get out the vote help us educate the voters. When Miguel Contreras was elected secretary treasurer of the County Federation of Labor, it had a big impact on labor history, not just in Los Angeles, but nationwide, because it signaled an aggressive effort to organize low-wage workers, especially Latino workers and immigrant workers. Of course, remember Los Angeles, there was a long tradition of fighting against unionization. And here comes Miguel who says, time to organize again. I think a lot of people underestimated Miguel. A lot of people underestimated Miguel. But I think that's not unusual. I told people, okay, we're not going to be any more ATMs for political parties. We're not going to be piggy banks for individual candidates. You know, we're going to stop that way and we're gonna stop playing racetrack politics. We're not in there to pick winners. We're in this fight to make winners. And we are gonna make winners by investing in our rank and file, registering to vote, educating them, and getting them out to vote. That's how we're gonna make winners. Through your work, you are electing many champions of the community. You've done it before, we've got to do it again. Today, let's walk both with Miguel on our mind, a sense of hope and future for our communities on our mind. We're going to send a strong message in Sacramento. Yeah. That on political action, the key was find out what the issues are, number one. Don't let a politician ever tell you what the issues are. You define the issues, and you define the debate. You know, what's important to your members? And are they willing to, for example, as a candidate willing to walk the picket lines with your members? Are they willing to lead a delegation to anti-labor employers demanding the right to organize? We elected a lot of labor warriors to the different legislative offices in California and the city of LA. But we had to make a decision is what do we do with them? What policies do we create that is really gonna make a change in working families here in the city of LA? So one of the first initiatives, I think it was the first major initiative, was a living wage initiative. And what it did was send a message to the business community in Los Angeles, is that there are people looking at how you treat your workers and how you pay your workers. One of my favorite things about Miguel, I'd ask him for advice a lot about how to talk to elected officials about something. And I would say, okay, I'm gonna go meet with them or make an appointment. He'd say, hell no, they're gonna come here and meet with us. He'd call them up and he'd get them right on the phone. He'd say, I need you to come over here and meet with me. And the, the person would say, yes. And I think, damn, how does he do that? And I realized it's because he felt the power of all of these people and he had the confidence. 
I don't want to be a statesman. I'm not here to make candidates and politicians happy. Now, I'm really here to organize. I'm here to organize the rest of the labor movement. That's my charge here. Every day I know that's what I'm supposed to do. My responsibility is to organize. And in turn, then they will organize more workers into the labor movement. So Caesar taught me right, is that every day we have to wake up and organize, organize, organize. We will reach out to our good allies in the Jewish community, in the Latino community, in the African American community, in the gay and lesbian community, in the women's organization, and all the way down the line to help us win this battle for workers in Los Angeles. Miguel skillfully combined politics and organizing. He was at the forefront of making sure that some of the finest progressive politicians in the country ran and won. And he built a culture within the labor movement here in Los Angeles where everybody, whether you were a labor leader, a rank and file member, an organizer, you participated in the political campaigns. We've had entertainment workers, we had longshoremen, we had tourism, communication, utility, school teachers, government employees, all joined together because we might be in different areas, but we're in the same boat when it comes down to our struggle to improve our, our economy and our life. Many people talk about the Rainbow Coalition in the South, but Miguel was the Rainbow Coalition in Los Angeles. He pulled everybody together. There were no color lines. There was no gender lines. Miguel treated all of us the same. I'm probably one of the only persons who can come in front of this camera and say I've arrested Miguel three times. We did what we could to support his movements and the movements of all our labor family within the city of Los Angeles. As the tale of two cities goes, this is the best of times and the worst of times. You know, and for workers, it's the worst of times. Workers still need a better right to organize here in Los Angeles. We need to provide better jobs here in Los Angeles, a better educational system in Los Angeles. So we have a, we have a lot of work to do. And I tell everybody, listen, we're a work in progress. We're not done yet. We are going to embark on a historic first here in Los Angeles. One thing about a good leader such as he was is that good leaders impart knowledge to their followers, and he didn't leave us empty-handed. He was an example to all of us. He made us laugh, he made us happy, he made us also understand the commitment that we all had towards bettering the situation for working families in this country, especially the poor. No matter whether they were farm workers or hotel workers or janitors or construction workers, he made us all feel like we had a place at the table. Make no mistake about it, this was a giant among men, a man who made a difference in this city. And so we're going to miss him. We're going to miss him, but we're going to remember him because he wouldn't want us here to just lament and cry about him and his life. He'd want us to remember him by the continuing what he was all about, empowering people, organizing, making a difference, improving the quality of life for more people. Sisters and brothers, there are certain things in life that are worth fighting for, for jobs that provide working people with a decent life, fight, for dignity and respect, fight, for opportunities that enable our children to grow, to flourish, and fulfill their dreams, fight. And for a more just and peaceful world, fight. For Miguel's memory and legacy, fight.
y como dijo el, nuestro compañero César Chávez, que últimamente vamos a ganar y que sí se puede. Sí. ¡Se puede! ¡Se puede! ¡Se puede! ¡En Pomona! ¡En Pomona! ¡Sí se puede! ¿En North Carolina? ¡Sí se puede! ¿Dónde más hay en Alecas? ¿En Texas? ¡Sí se puede! ¿En Nueva York? ¡Sí se puede! ¿New Jersey? ¡Sí se puede! ¿En Stockton? ¡Sí se puede! ¿En Ohio? ¡Sí se puede! ¿Por todos los puentes que no hay en Alecas? ¡Sí se puede! ¡Claro!